Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Sosedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be going over an introduction to orbital diagrams, so if you have any questions, make sure that you ask tomorrow, but also make sure that you're following along with your notes and you fill in everything as you see. So how can you represent electrons in an atom? There are actually two ways that we're going to learn to do that, but the first one that we're going to go over, they're called orbital diagrams, and that is a visual way to show the arrangement of electrons in an atom, and it uses arrows, specifically up arrows and down arrows, as we'll find out about in a second. So before we actually go over how to make any of these diagrams or the important properties of them, we have to talk about a couple of important definitions. So the first is called a ground state electron configuration. Now that sounds kind of confusing, but it's the most stable arrangement of electrons in an atom's orbitals. And we call that the ground state electron configuration because ground state is where electrons reside in their lowest energy orbitals. And it represents an atom as it appears normally. So if you were to find any element from the periodic table, in its ground state, we should be able to draw the orbital diagram for that um, element. And so the thing about the ground state is you can kind of think of it as if you are staying at a hotel or something like that. Uh, the ground floor, you know where the lobby is, that is the ground state, and it's because it is in the lowest possible energy level. You know, in order to go up, let's say the elevators are broken in this hotel, so you'd have to travel up higher and higher and higher, which means that you'd be actually using up more energy. But in the ground floor, the ground state, that's where you have, you know, sort of the lowest possible energy level. So what do we call it when in our hotel we move from the ground floor up to another floor? Well, that's called an excited state. And if electrons are in a higher energy state than the ground state, they're said to be in an excited state. When electrons are in their excited state, they absorb and release energy according to good old E equals H times V. So that formula, again, that keeps showing up in this unit, um, this is a way of representing how much energy there would be in an electron in its excited state. Now, something that scientists realized were that atoms are always filled from the lowest energy to the highest energy orbitals. So everybody starts at the ground floor and then kind of works their way up if they can or if they have to, but they don't necessarily have to all the time, as we'll find out. And so what are orbitals represented by in our sort of, you know, um, orbital diagram world? They're represented by two different things, a number and a letter. Now, the number tells you the distance the electron is from the nucleus in the atom, and it ranges from 1 to 7. So I'm going to draw sort of my nucleus of an atom. Let's say that, you know, if I am this far away, that is like the 1 level, okay? If I'm that far away, that would be 2. That far away, that would be 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7. So this sort of gives us an idea of how far away the electron is from the nucleus. The closer they are, uh, the lower energy they have. The further away we get, the higher the energy goes until we get all the way to a level 7 electron, which would be the furthest away from the nucleus. So over here we have low energy, and then over here we have high energy. Now, what is the letter? Well, the letter gives us the shape of the orbital. Because remember, according to Schrodinger's equations, um, not everything is as circular as Bohr thought. We had these other sort of weird shapes which kind of looked like this or looked like that or other weird shapes that electrons could exist in. And so those were given letter associations. And actually they do stand for certain words, but they don't actually really mean anything anymore. So S, P, D, and then F. Those are the letters that we associate with different shapes, okay? And again, it's not really important what they meant, but they did have to do with emission spectra, and that's the reason why we still use those four letters, because they were kind of introduced early in um, chemistry. So we still use the same letters, S, P, D, and F, to represent different shapes. So how do we put all of this stuff together? So remember, every orbital is represented by a number and by a letter. So I just decided to randomly sort of write down uh, different examples of what orbital coordinates might look like. And so here they are. You could have a 3D orbital or a 1S orbital or a 4F orbital or a 3P orbital or a 5D orbital. 
etc., 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 etc. And so the number in each one of these tells us the relative distance the electron is from the nucleus. And then the letter that we see at the end here gives us the shape of the orbital that we're looking for. So just to give you an idea, I put this in your notes too. Uh, these are the shapes. And so this is what an s orbital looks like. These three are the p shapes. Okay, and so we like to call those sort of the dumbbell shapes. They kind of look like dumbbells. The d orbitals, they have five different sort of shapes. We like to call those the four-leaf clover ones, with the exception of sort of this one in the middle. It looks a little strange. The f orbitals are very complicated, and it's almost impossible to probably even make them out in this video what they look like, but they're very different, and so we almost never deal with f orbitals because they're a little bit too complicated. But there are these seven different shapes for f orbitals. And so remember, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the distance the electron is, and then these are our possible shapes of where electrons can move. These are our probability curves. So how are we supposed to memorize all of the possible orbitals that electrons can exist in? It seems like an almost an impossible task, but it's not. Here is actually the list from lowest to highest energy, and there are some missing, that's why it says etc., because it does keep going. Um, Here's our list of lowest to highest energy possible orbitals. How are you supposed to remember that? Are you just going to have to memorize it? Well, uh, no, you're not going to just have to memorize it, because luckily there's sort of a shorthand way of remembering all of these things. There's a pattern, and you might not be able to see the pattern immediately, but uh, make sure, because you have a gigantic space on your note, on your note packet that sort of is blank. Uh, we're going to be drawing something in that space, and here's our way of remembering how these orbitals appear. All right, so get ready to draw some randomness in that space. So the first thing we do is we list all of our numbers that we can have possible from 1 to 7, and we do that vertically. So just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So kind of up here we have our low energies and then down here we have our higher energies, okay? Now we have to know our shapes though, and so uh, the shapes go in this order, S, P, D, and then F, that's our order. So for our first level, we can only have S as our shape, and so I can fill in S's though, going all the way down like this. Now, at our second level, I can now have a P shape though, but that means that every other higher energy orbital can also have P as a shape. So I kind of just draw that in like this. And then when I get to the third level, I can have a D shape. And so I'm going to put Ds down here like that. And then finally, once I get to the fourth level, I can actually have um, F shapes. So I'm just going to fill those in like that. All right, so that kind of gives us something that we can draw pretty quickly, okay? And so you probably will at some point in your life, especially for the midterm, have to draw this out at some point, okay? So now how are we supposed to know the order from lowest to highest? Because it wasn't as simple as just kind of, you know, going in a straight line or something like that. Now we start to draw diagonal lines. So this, like this. We start drawing diagonal lines through all of our levels like this. Now if we follow our arrows, that gives us, from lowest to highest energy, the order of each orbital, okay? So what does that mean? I know this probably looks even more horrifying to you, but look at the list that we had on the last slide. It actually matches this pattern. So we start with the 1s, and then our next arrow down is the 2s, and then we follow the arrow going down. So we have the 2p and then the 3s. All right, then we have the 3p and the 4s. Then we have the 3d, the 4p, and the 5s. Then we have the 4d, the 5p, and the 6s. Then we have the 4f, the 5d, the 6p, the 7s. Then we have the 5f, the 6d, 7p, 6f, 7d, and then we have the 7f. And so that is the order that we fill electrons in, going from the lowest energy to the highest energy. So that's how we're going to remember that order without having to actually just memorize a list of random letters and numbers.
And so here's what it looks like in its final form with sort of like perfect diagonals. And why they didn't continue this down is beyond me. They could have kept going, but they didn't continue their errors. It's probably because they don't really exist so much as we get down to the 7F. But anyway, that's how we're going to memorize this pattern without having to just remember random numbers and letters. So the very last piece of information we need here is how many electrons can we actually fit inside of these shapes? Because we have all of these shapes, how many electrons can we actually fit in these different levels? Well, in s orbitals, we can only fit two electrons. That's it. So that little circular shape, we can only fit two electrons in there. In p orbitals, we can fit six electrons. Why? Because we have three different shapes. So each shape can fit two electrons in it. Next up, the d's. They can have 10 electrons. Why? Because each shape can have two electrons in it like this. So that adds up to 10 since there are five different shapes. And finally, we have the f orbitals, which can have 14 electrons because, again, I can have two electrons in each shape. And there are seven different shapes in the f orbitals. So I can have 14 electrons. And that's absolutely it.